Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Monday. Welcome to Monday. He's not ready for it to be and Monday. I was like, just close to saying, I'm not getting out of bed today. At all. The whole day. I'll see you on Tuesday. Really? That yes. was the plan? That was my plan. I did not know this. <laughs> that would have been bad news. Yeah. Yeah, wouldn't have got a lot done, that's for sure. No, certainly not. Uh -huh. Your butt would be very flat. Yes, at this point <laughs> I'd be having bed sores, I'm sure. <laughs> That'd be bad. How was your workout? Mm. What if tastes good on this fasting day? Okay. <laughs> Uh, workout was good. I did I did uh, the treadmill for the first time. I know. Time. I walked into the gym and he was on the treadmill. Yeah. Hey, Valerie. Morning, Valerie. It's good to see you. And I was like, he's a, what? I don't think I've ever seen him on yeah. the treadmill. So I did 25 minutes on that. But you know what? I walked in. I asked him. I said, why are you on the treadmill? He said it was the first thing here. So I got on it. I'm like, I don't know if that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I did that. And then I did legs. Did some calves in there as well. Okay. So it was good. Good that's workout. Good. Yeah. All right, today was chest, shoulders, and tries for me. She says, she's still in bed. Nice. Good for you. Nice, man. Valerie. Hey, Carol. It's good, good morning, to see Carol. you. It's nice to see you finally live. Yes. Um, so yeah, chest, shoulders, and tries for me today. But I woke up and my shoulder was a little bit unhappy with life. I don't know if I slept on it funny or just mm. something. You know, guys, you guys know if you watch us, my left shoulder bothers me sometimes. So I spent some time stretching it, and that helped. And then I did, I did do my tricep workout completely. And then I did just a really light um, chest workout and I didn't do shoulders at all. So then I had an extra 15 minutes. So I was on the AMT at the gym, mm -hmm. just kind of doing my little thing for 15 minutes, a little bit of extra cardio. Today's going to be an interesting fasting day for me. I can tell. You already. keep telling them that, like you're failing at fasting. I do it. I just, I'm not as happy about doing it as I used to be. <laughs> no, because I see the apple sitting over there and I'm like, oh, I'll have some apple. And I'm like, oh, wait, you can't yet. It's fasting day. When I got this morning, I saw the grace. I'm like, oh, awesome. oh, no, I can't do that either. <laughs> and you guys saw, um, I posted yesterday on our page a picture of the sweet potato lasagna that I made. Which, when I say it was awesome, I am doing, I am not doing it justice. It, it turned out really, really well. I did, I baked it yesterday, so we had that for dinner last night. So then, that's in the refrigerator, call it our name. And then you went and typed it out too, right? I did. I, I, I'm trying to figure out, because you guys know how I cook, like just throw stuff in there. So I'm trying to type out what I did and, and to make it so that you guys can recreate it if you want to. And it'll be on the website for those of you who are members. And then it'll absolutely be in the book. Yeah. I also posted, if you're paying attention, that I sent the first draft of the manuscript to the editor to get feedback on the manuscript as a whole. I sent that to her yesterday. So she's supposed to give us feedback this week on that. So right. I'm Which super very excited cool. about yeah, it. Absolutely. Yay. But that's not what we're talking about today. Today we're talking about lowering stubborn cholesterol. And um, I'm reading this book by um, Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn. It's called Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease. There you go, you can see it. I guess we gotta put that on our website, huh? I think it might be already, I'm oh, not sure. Okay. We can check. We can check and see if make sure it's on our resources page. But Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease, Dr. Esselstyn has done a lot of uh, scientific research with actual human beings who have very advanced heart disease and being able to reverse their heart disease with diet. And he talks about how, and I'm gonna read you this, this one passage because I felt like it was really relevant. And so this is a direct quote. A person who maintains a blood cholesterol level under 150 for a lifetime will not develop coronary heart disease, even if he or she smokes, has a family history of coronary heart disease, suffers from hypertension, and is obese. Basically, what, he, what his argument is, is that if you don't ingest what it takes for your body to have high cholesterol, you can't have stuff that sticks to the walls of your um, arteries, and you can't have, like, you just can't have the problem. So he did say, though, so you want to be under 150 total, and you want your LDL to be under 80, mm. which um, is, is tough to achieve. And now, if you're eating um, animal products, Valerie was the first one I read. Oh, yeah, yay. very good. Um, if you're, if you're eating animal products, your body ends up with cholesterol in two ways. One, you're ingesting cholesterol. We've told you that cheese is the number one source of saturated fat and cholesterol and eggs in, um, in the American diet. So you're ingesting cholesterol, which is one thing. The other thing that happens, and I just learned this, I didn't realize this, is that when you ingest fat, it induces your body to create more of its own cholesterol which I didn't realize. I didn't either. Yeah. And I've told you before that the way cholesterol lowering medications work is they don't help your body clear cholesterol. What it does is it turns down or turns off your making of your own cholesterol. So that, that's how the drugs work is they stop your body um, synthesizing or creating its own cholesterol. 
So what you want to do is you want to obviously not take in cholesterol, which you're going to find in your animal products. All animal products have it. There's no exception. Um, fish, meat, turkey, poultry, whatever, mm -hmm. cheese, dairy, dairy yeah. all of it, eggs, all of it has cholesterol in it. So you want to stop ingesting cholesterol. That's going to be your first, first thing. And for some people, just switching to a plant-based diet is enough, and they lower their cholesterol. And it gets down to the 150 mark, and it's like, fabulous, awesome, good job. And I see that. I see that in the groups I'm in. But there are some people, myself in this group, I have a thyroid condition, you know that. And so my body doesn't clear cholesterol as well as other people's do. My body just isn't as good at that as some people's are. And so my cholesterol, even though I'm plant-based, still wants to hover in the 190, 200 range, which is too high. It's... Um, yes, it's normal, and then you know mm -hmm. doctors are like, "Oh, it's fine." It's not fine. It, it's, <laughs> it's not safe. It's, you're still you still end up with um, with the risk of heart disease at that level. So I want my cholesterol to be lower. So it's like, okay, so what can I do? And what Dr. Esselstein talks about is that even plant fats can cause your body to create more cholesterol, which is interesting because Dr. Greger from How Not to Die says things like eating nuts helps lower cholesterol. Right. So there's some mixed information there, and I've been, I've been talking to Russ about the amount of nuts and seeds and stuff that we eat, and is that contributing to my higher cholesterol because I'm ingesting more fat? And avocados, we eat avocados, avocados too. Avocados, yeah. And so I, I, you know, I'm wondering about that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue reading this book. I'm going to you know, try and balance those things out, and I may do like just a one-person study <laughs> and try it myself to see what happens if I were to stop eating you know, avocados and as much nuts and seeds as I do, would my cholesterol drop? Mm -hmm. So that's definitely interesting. Another thing that I've learned from this book so far, which I didn't know, um, I've told you that the endothelial cells are the layer of cells in your blood vessels that keep your cholesterol from sticking and they keep you from ending up with, you know, atherosclerosis, mm -hmm. that's a very hard word to say, yes, yes. and heart disease. Um, but apparently when they go in with like, and they, for, for um, heart disease and they go in and do like the balloon or they put in a stent or they do any of those things, they damage the endothelial cells. And so the spot where they've actually, you know, done whatever they've done to try and make the situation better becomes then even more likely to develop um, more plaque attached to it because the endothelial cells are damaged and the medication that they have on the stent that you know, is supposed to help keep the um, blood vessel open, apparently keeps your endothelial cell from heating, uh, healing properly. Oh, so it's kind of a, a, a challenge thing and where the stent can create, it helps, but then it can create a problem. And from what we've seen, that's always, that, those things are just short-term solutions mm -hmm. because they're doing two things they're not doing. They're not really fixing the problem, right? Which is the high cholesterol right, to begin yeah. with, yeah. Um, you know, and the people that go through these things, they're not changing their lifestyles. You right. know, because I mean, they're not they, being given the knowledge. They're not being given the knowledge, and a lot of them think that I'll just go get this and I'm fixed, and I don't have to worry about it, and they wind up having it again and different problems, and and eventually you're told we can't do it no more. We, we've done all the procedures we can do, you know, get your things in order, which you know yeah. we saw in the, the Forks Over Knives documentary. And that's what that's what the people who um, in this book that Dr. Esselstein talks about. By the time they come to them, it, it's funny because the cardiologists were like. Well, he's not a cardiologist. We're not sending our patients to them. And so they kept their patients and didn't tell them about his study until they basically got to the point where we're like, there's nothing we can do for you. You're going to die. You may as well go talk to Dr. Esselstein. Right. And then Dr. Esselstein was able to um, save their lives, to save their lives and, and help turn around their heart disease. And that for me is frustrating that there are doctors that say that. There's one doctor in here who bet his patient a steak dinner. He would never get his cholesterol under 300. And the, the, he dropped it under 150, and he never um, went and got the steak dinner. For right, because reasons. obviously he's not going to eat it. With a steak dinner, you're not going to get your cholesterol right. under 150. So um, it's an interesting book. Um, I'm learning a lot. There's also a bunch of recipes. Like half this book is recipes, which surprised me. I did not expect that. So um, Dr. Esselstein is very staunch on no oil, um, no nuts. If, if you have active heart disease, no nuts. Um, no, avocados. no avocado, no coconut. If you have active heart disease, and I'm thinking, you know, with someone with stubborn cholesterol, because of the issues I have with my body clearing cholesterol, 
if I went on something that was more strict like this with no avocados, no nuts, no seeds, no coconut, would it help my cholesterol? So that's something I'm considering. I don't have an answer for sure, but it definitely um, seems like it might be possible with, with what Dr. Esselstyn yeah, is saying. Yeah, makes sense. You were reading something about Esselstyn. Did you learn anything The only thing, else? I mean, you basically said everything that, I, that I've that i read this morning. Um, the only thing that he added was, is, you know, the standard that the American standard is they want you under 200 uh, milligrams of, of cholesterol. Total. Total. Mm -hmm. um, the problem with that is, is, is what he said in this article I just read, is that most of the cases of heart attacks are people that are between that 150 and 200 mm -hmm. milligrams. Mm -hmm. So his argument in this panel he's talking about, they all disagree with the, the standard that the U.S. gives out, is that you're basically saying once you're in that risk, you're good. You know, right. get they to the risk it. area and then you're perfect. We'll let you go. Right. Um, so it's interesting. Um, you know, I mean, I still want to lower my cholesterol. It's getting down there. It's doing, Yours is doing better. It's doing yeah. better, but Yours I still like to better. get it down too. I mean, yeah. it just seems to make sense. So, yeah, the, and it's interesting that that's the, that's the number that, and you know, Americans, it used to be 250. And I realized back when I was, you know, in my 20s, I went to one of these health fair things and they pricked your finger and... And, you know, they actually said to me, you have high cholesterol, you need to get your cholesterol checked. And I went to my doctor and my doctor was like, yeah, you have a thyroid condition, that's fine, no big deal. So I didn't even ask. But at that time, I bet that high cholesterol was 250 because yeah. they, they used to be that was the standard. acceptable number. Right. I wonder what my cholesterol was right. when I was at that health fair. And the other, the other interesting thing about uh, Dr. Uh, Esselstein is he's, he reversed all these heart disease patients, mm -hmm. right? I mean, he was successful basically 100% of the time. The one time where he wasn't totally successful was when the person went off the diet, but then when he realized he screwed up, came back, and of course he became okay. Got straightened out, yeah. yeah. So there was a 100% success rate, which is, you know, unheard of. Unheard of, um, yeah. But what's interesting is he talks about 150 um, as, as the limit. Like for normal, cholesterol, for cholesterol, cholesterol. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't include exercise. Right. And the article I just read says he doesn't include exercise because he feels like if you ask people to make too many lifestyle changes, they don't do any. Yes. Right. So I think that's an important fact that st you have to start someplace, get that going, get used to doing that. And in this case, we always recommend diet first. You know, get your diet right. And then, you know, once that's become easy for you and it's become just your normal, normal. life, then you can start looking at the exercising and, and whatnot. Adding things, yeah. yeah. And that's a good point. Like that, he was all about getting people to eat plant based and, and really a strict plant based. And it's interesting because his son, um, does a plant strong diet mm -hmm. and he's not as strict right. he's he's much and so they they kind of have different opinions but they still manage to have family dinner mm -hmm. together it seems they get along just fine right. so um, but his uh, his son's name is Rip Esselstein and he has the engine to yeah, fire engine um, two. Yeah. processed foods you can get it like I think they're at Trader Joe's or they might even be at Whole Foods he, exactly did, he did that sure. one thing where he actually was in Whole Foods yeah so he has the engine engine two um, stuff that you can get that's plant based is, is their son Rip, Rip Esselstein right. but uh, this is uh, like I said I'm going to show it to you again this is Caldwell Esselstein um, Jr., MD, and he's a surgeon, and it, his book is called Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease. Right. And the interesting thing about, for people that don't know who Dr. Esselstein is, is he actually was uh, breast cancer, right? That was He was a surgeon mostly for breast, breast cancer, cancer and thyroid cancer. Right, right. And then it was just, you know, seeing all these other patients coming in with all these problems is what got him interested in doing the whole thing about heart disease. And then he did studies on right. heart disease, yeah. And that he also cool. read, which um, I forget which document it was, but he read that he actually read the China study, and that kind of was, yeah, was the uh, opening light yeah. for him. Yeah. Which is... Um, Dr. T. Colin Tom Campbell is a, is a China study. So exactly. very interesting. I, I, I'm not done reading it yet, and I definitely am going to go through. I, I looked at it real quickly, and there's a blueberry muffin recipe in here I want to try. Yes. That's definitely on the and list. And I am looking forward to that. Well, that's because it's fasting day. You're looking forward to anything. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> Do you have anything you want to add about lowering stubborn cholesterol? I know. I think that's about it. Okay. Yeah. Um, you guys know that our website is rnrjourney.com. And nope, he does have something to add. Just, just uh, on, so he, he's very big on keeping your LDL particularly low. Esselstein is. Right, and it seems like he thinks it should be under 80. So for those of you who pay attention to your cholesterol, you're shooting for under 80 on your LDL. You're done now? I am done now. Okay. <laughs> you're so ridiculous. 
Hey, Allison. Good it's morning, good to see Allison. you. We're just getting finished. Um, our website is rnrjourney.com. You can become a member there. I will be posting the recipe for the sweet potato lasagna. Russ's very fast uh, Italian dinner yeah. that we Quick made. and easy Italian. Quick and easy. He posted a picture of that earlier last week. So we're posting that on the website. And then also um, my my cashew cream cheese kind of thing that I put in on my lasagna. We'll be posting that on the website. Mm -hmm. So if you're not a member, make sure you become a member so you can get access to those recipes at rnrjourney.com. That's the hashtag I have up there at the top. Our webinar is at howtofeedahuman.com. And if you're getting value out of these, please do like and share them. That's how we get to reach other people. Right. So don't just lurk. I know yeah. a bunch of Russ's family watches us. Out His mother is constantly yeah. saying that they watch us. And we're like, hey, Grecos, like our video. <laughs> And also, uh, when you do like or follow our page, make sure you go up the notifications and select all posts. That way you'll be sure to see us when we are live. And you'll get to see, yeah. Right. And if you miss and, the picture and, of my sweet potato lasagna, go back and Right. Look. And the thing is, you don't have to necessarily watch us live, but it will let you know that we were live. So when you are around and you do get around to watching it, you'll be notified. Yep. Is that everything? That's everything. All right. Like and share. That's it. And so with that, we will say happy Monday. <laughs> Eat real food. Mostly, Mostly plants. plants. Have a great day. Have guys. a good one. We'll see you tomorrow.